Hi folks, Mr. Fusak here again. We're going to do uh, some notes here on Section 2, Restless Continents. And you should have this packet out. It's two pages, each front and back. Um, the first front and back is the notes, and then I've also attached the reading section that goes with this, in case you're someone that just likes to have that with you, or if, if you want to read through that yourself. So, our learning target again, E3.P3A, describe geologic paleontologic and paleoclimatologic evidence that indicates Africa and South America were once part of a single continent. Geologic would be like rocks. Paleontologic, talking fossils here. Paleoclimatologic, we are talking glacial evidence. So, uh, here's our sheet. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the PowerPoint here. Scroll down to where we're starting. All right, section two, here we go. Feel free to pause this as you need, because I'm going to keep moving through it. So if you need to write something down, pause, and uh, then just hit play again. So first off, what is continental drift? <clears throat> this is a hypothesis that continents once formed a single landmass, then broke up, and drifted to their present locations. With that said, we know that they're also still moving. Okay, The continents are still drifting. All right, But the, the hypothesis or theory of continental drift is that they were once a single landmass. They've broken up and moved to where they currently are. Pause if you need to. I'm moving on. Two says, uh, what three things have been found on separate continents that support the idea of continental drift? Fossils. You can see the colored bands here showing the, the places that we find these particular fossils of these particular species. Similar types of rock. So it would look, uh, we're seeing similar rock layers, uh, say, on the coast of South America, and in certain places on the coast of Africa, indicating that, hmm, these puzzle pieces probably did fit together at some point. And three, the same ancient climatic conditions. This is that glacial evidence we're talking about. See how they're all attached to what uh, uh, is now Antarctica? Uh, they were at some point in a place on Earth where there were glaciers. And glaciers end up leaving uh, some glacial till and uh, things like that where we know a glacier was in the area. But in Africa, you saw in that diagram, figure three from the 23rd Annual Consortium of Geologists, that, um, you know, Africa's in a place now where we see glacial evidence, but we don't have glaciers there. Glaciers have to form either near the poles in very cold places or um, on mountaintops. Okay, and we have them on coasts of Africa and India, places where we shouldn't normally have them. Pause if you need to. I'm moving on. So what's a mid-ocean ridge for number three? It's an underwater mountain chain that runs through ocean basins. You can see in this um, piece right here that uh, they are flashing here. Those are our mid-ocean ridges. And mid-ocean ridges are spreading centers. They are divergent boundaries, diverging to move apart. And... The most notorious, or famous, or well-known here is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Running down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, you can see the United States right here. And here's the Atlantic Ocean. And this is the most active spreading region in the world. Okay, We'll talk about this one quite a bit. But it's an underwater mountain chain that runs through the ocean basins. You hear my dog Bailey barking at me, trying to get inside. Number four, bottom of the front page here. So explain sea floor spreading. This is the process by which new oceanic lithosphere, we don't just want to say crust, we want to say lithosphere, because the plates are lithosphere, not just crust. Lithosphere is the crust and part of the upper mantle. So the process by which new oceanic lithosphere forms as magma rises toward the surface and then solidifies. So as tectonic plates are moving away from each other, the sea floor spreads apart, Magma comes up from this divergent boundary, fills the gap, hardens, and then the whole process happens again. Okay, they move away, magma fills the gap, solidifies, and so on and so on. This diagram here <coughs> is showing us exactly how that's happening. So pretend uh, on the left-hand side here we have maybe North America or South America and Africa or Europe over here. On the right-hand side, in the middle, we'll call this the, the Atlantic Ocean here, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, or a, a Mid-Ocean Ridge. And you can see that each of these pieces are moving in separate directions. 
right? Therefore, this is a spreading center. We're going to get C floor spreading. Magma is going to come up, solidify. Then over time, as these are moving away from each other, more magma will fill the gap, solidify, they'll move away from each other over time, and so on and so on. Therefore, creating new oceanic lithosphere. Five says, what's a magnetic reversal? Well, this is simply put, when the poles change places, the north that we know to be north, where our compass points to, full flip-flops, and is now at the south pole, okay? The polarity of Earth's magnetic poles changes, that's a magnetic reversal. So our normal north-south that we think of now, when that flip-flops, um, magnetic reversal, our polarity has changed. And we have discovered that this has happened many times throughout Earth's geologic history. So as we're looking at these diagrams, A, B, C, <clears throat> if A is a period of normal magnetism, the yellow here is crust that's formed during this, or lithosphere formed during this period, and you can see that it's all pointing this in this direction. And when I say point in this direction, I'm talking about a mineral called magnetite. It's something in um, this magma that, that uh, or, or is solidifying, and when it, the magma solidifies into this new ocean of lithosphere, this magnetite is sort of like uh, an arrow. It's, a, it's, it's pointing us in the direction of the magnetic pole at that period. So as I go to B here, <clears throat> now the yellow from above has been pushed outwards uh, through a period of other crust forming, or, or I'm sorry, I should say lithosphere. And it's red here because it's showing that it has a different magnetic orientation. In the yellow, the magnetite's pointing one way. In the red, it's pointing the other way showing us that there was a polar reversal uh, right here between the red and the yellow at that time period. And then see, we're back to where we started. The poles flipped again. And so now we're back to a normal magnetism period, which would be that North Pole being the magnetic north. Our compass points to that. That's what we're familiar with. So six, explain how scientists know that magnetic reversals have taken place in the past. Well, it says the molten rock at mid-ocean ridges contains magnetite. You might want to underline magnetite as you write that in. When magnetite cools, it aligns with the current magnetic field. And the last one, our rock records distinctly show that uh, these reversals have taken place um, as we look at rocks on both sides of the mid-ocean ridge. All right? Pause if you need to. I'm going to move on. Seven, where's the youngest crust? Well, it's closest to the mid-ocean ridge. At the bottom of this diagram, I see my cross-section of the mid-ocean ridge. I go right up to the middle here where I'm looking at my magnetic reversal strips and to the top, and it says, oh, the youngest is here in the middle. It gets older as it moves outwards. And it should make sense based on what we've talked about with seafloor spreading, but and this also shows our magnetic reversal strips. These two nearest the center are pointing, say, to the north. You go out to the second one on each side, pointing south, pointing south, and so on and so on. The ones pointing the same directions, that are equal distances from this middle ocean ridge, we know were created at the same time. So these two closest were created at the same time. Two to the left and two to the right were created at the same time, and so on and so on. Okay, so that's it here for this video. Go uh, see that reading if you need to, or re-watch the video if you need to.